Afternoon. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, personal emails via YouTube as well as uh, from people that I know specifically. I've had a few people come back to me asking me about uh, bearings for the Aprilia RS125. Okay. Right. Just give me a second. A lot of people have asked which is the best way to get the bearings out of the Aprilia RS125 if they're going to be replacing uh, the bearings. But they've subsequently also asked about the size of the bearings itself. Well, if anyone had looked in the videos and assuming it's still within the background scene, you'll find that the uh, bearings are actually already displayed for you. Now, I didn't actually point this out, but I will show you now the size of the bearings that I have ordered. Okay. These are the size that I have ordered. But with this lot, I have been given O-rings, which is part of the deal. Okay. Now I've kept these out separately because I was going to measure them up against the uh, old ones that I have currently removed. Okay. Now with that being said, a lot of people have asked about the size of the bearings and is it really important? Well, I can tell you the best way to get the bearings out of here, sorry about that, the best way to get the bearings out of here and it's not by getting them pressed in either, you do not press them in, you do not try and press them back out, it actually causes more problems because being an aluminium cast head, or a lower crankcase in this case, you'll find that you could end up damaging all of this. So the question is, how do you get it in and get it out? Well, there are several ways of doing this, but the effective way that I've found is, next door is the oven. <clears throat> when the missus isn't in, thankfully, uh, what I'll do, I'll clean the entire lower crankcase, which I have done to the best of my ability, but I will send this off to get it all done properly. But to get this uh, done is where you've got the recess of one and you have another recess of two. I would lay this down in the oven like so on gas mark five, six for about ten minutes. Walk away, but I would leave the door open and what I would hear is I'd hear that. <clears throat> then I'll know one of these bearings has dropped. If I can hear one drop, then it's likely that all the other bearings are ready to come out. Lo and behold, this one, yes, every single bearing had came out without too much of a hitch. Now, on one or two of them, you will find that you'll need a very soft wooden, wooden stick, as it were, <clears throat> if you have one. And if it doesn't come out naturally, what you would end up doing is tapping the case to shock it in respects, hopefully to try and dislodge the next bearing. Okay? But using an oven is more than effective to do that. You do not need to get the whole system pressed out. But where I've been asked about the sizes of the um, bearings, I will try and find one that has all the markings on there. There we go. I see one here. All right. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. Clearly, it needs to go back there somewhere. So that's a 6206C3. Oh, didn't go out of focus, sorry about that. 
BS, that's a 6206C3. And that would be in conjunction with what you see there. Okay. Now this is a FAG, F-A-G, not any other versions of FAG, thank you very much. Uh, but I found that uh, when I was turning the bike over and trying to get it to run, yeah sure the bike was running, it was running quite nicely. The only time I could pull away on this was when you got it up to 7,000 revs and that's when it decided to come to life, properly. And uh, it's not what I would always expect to see from uh, a two-stroker. I'd say around about 2,000 you can pull away and it should be just fine, but no, this one was a little bit iffy. But one thing I did notice uh, during the turnover period um, is that uh, the bike was sounding like a, a bag of marbles in uh, a tumble dryer. I'll give you an example. And that's a C3. Uh, one of the viewers has decided to go for a C4. Now, difference between uh, C1, uh, regular, C3, C4, C5. Regular is equivalent to a C2, which is standard. Um, with that being said, being standard, uh, what I have found is that C3 is a little bit more loose. So it's equivalent to having something like if I can get the sound there. Every so often it would happen. But these aren't oiled up yet. Now this is what needs to be replaced is that Not very nice. I'll go for a little smaller one now. These have all been cleaned. Oh, shit, sorry. Every single one of these have been cleaned. Uh, WD-40, Fairy Liquid, your mum's washing up powder, it doesn't make any difference. Every single one of them have been cleaned. But the two worst ones were these. Now that's what I would expect from a big main bearing. The end time you're The only time you'd find that out is when you strip down the engine and uh, literally remove the crank like I have shown you. Remove the crank and you could probably spin one of those up. And when you do and you hear it like a, a skateboard wall, you know you need to replace it regardless. But when you start getting a lot of clanging, both left and right, too much of a, a rotational movement, that's when you'd know that it'd be best off being replaced. Now, I've gone SKF. Uh, there has been some talk or chatter with regards to um, Koyo, SKF, FAG, and several other bearings. To be honest, they are pretty much of a much. They are no different from one or another. And truth be known, it makes a difference. I mean, I've got three bearings that are FAG-based, I've got two that are unbranded and one something else. Uh, to be honest with you, they're all pretty much of a match. Uh, but uh, when I look at the main bearings, uh, they are both fag based. Yep, both of them are fag based. And yet one is actually worse than the other. Now, I can tell you that one is worse than the other because one of them didn't get oiled properly so it's just been running on nothing but bearings so quite a few uh, quite a few bearings have literally destroyed themselves by revving up to the best part of uh, 10 to 14,000 RPMs 
But that's what you would expect. Bear in mind, it's only a two-stroke, and they don't really get much oil. The only oil that they get is from what's under the seat. It gets pre-mixed with the fuel, and as the piston is going up and down, it will start drawing in and out its fuel in order to self-lubricate itself, which is good. Which is good. Um, makes it a little bit easier. But I just wish they had a small separate canister that would only allow small amounts of oil to be passed through the system to encourage the uh, um, lubrication process. Alright, some of you are asking, where did I get these bearings? Now, I'm the person that used to sell BMW Vanos systems. Uh, if anyone knows what a BMW M3 convertible or just a normal Evolution M3, you'll know that they'll have a, a dual Vanos system. Now, if anyone knows anything about those cars, then they would know about these O-rings. Now, these O-rings, the ones that are here, these, I would say, uh, well, being brown in colour, I would have to say that um, these are not Booner inversions. If anything, I would say, uh, let's have a look, these look to be like Viaton O-rings. I'll give you an example. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. There are some numbers on the back. These numbers are pretty much similar to what you'd see on the box in the background. 38 27 Now 38 is the outer, 28 is the inner and a 7 is the width. Okay? Now, you will need to replace those. Now, I've got three of them here. One being a Booner N which I personally don't like. These are all double lipped. Oh, actually, no, one of them's double lipped. Now I've got two double lip, one single lip. Two double lips are actually better. If you can see on the inside, they have. If you can see on the inside, they have a double lip on this one. Uh, if it's got a double lip, that's what you want. But I've only got a single lip on this one. Okay, not very practical, but hey, never mind. Uh, I'll come back in about five minutes. Speak to you soon.